Hey there, Josh Powers here with Quixel, and today we're going to continue our dive into the Mixer Mass Stack by exploring the Noise Component. So let's get to it. The Noise Component will procedurally generate a variety of different types of noises to help with mass creation. Currently there are five different noise types, each one having their own look. There is Simplex, Herlin, and then Whirly 1, 2, and 3. The seat slider will iterate through the different versions of the noise based on the other settings applied. Amplitude will control the intensity of the noise waves, so as we crank the slider up, we see more and more contrast being applied to the values. Frequency controls the amount of noise, so the lower this value, the larger the detail, and the higher the value, the smaller the detail. Octaves control the number of octaves and the noise, and as we pull this slider up, the more we see finer irregularities in the noise waves. This is a great way to help reduce the procedural appearance of the noise. Lacunarity controls the frequency of the octaves. And persistence controls the amplitude or intensity of the octaves. And then finally we have invert. And these basic settings operate the exact same way for each of the noise modes, so you don't need to worry about different parameters for each one. All right, let's take a few minutes and explore some ways we can use noise to help us create masks for our textures. Noise is most often used as a supplement to break up masks or add some smaller details to a texture. However, it can also easily be used to create height map definition for the texture itself. Here we have a solid layer just above our base layer. Let's go ahead and give it a mask stack and then we'll move up to the component button and add a Whirly 3 noise. We'll pull back on the amplitude a little bit and the frequency also. Let's crank the octaves up to 10 so we can get some nice smaller details. And then we'll reduce the lacunarity sum to pull back on the frequency of the noise that we just added with the octaves. And we'll leave persistence alone. All right, let's tweak the values a touch by dropping in a gradient remap. For this one, all we'll do is bring in the range sliders a very small amount so that we can add a bit more contrast to the mask. All right, if we go back to render mode, we have a pretty sweet looking rock tile here. And by adding a rock surface from the Megascans library, along with a couple of solid layers for some color breakup, we've created a really cool texture utilizing the noise component for the core look and feel of the surface. All right, here's another example of how we can leverage the noise component to add some dirt kicked up onto this wooden stool. I demonstrated a similar technique in a previous video on the position gradient component, but I used a map component and scan data to create the muddy fall off. And this time I want to show you how you can create some nice results using procedural components only. First, we'll start off by activating this surface layer I added from the Megascans library. After we add a mass stack to the layer, we'll want to go ahead and add a position gradient. The only thing we're really going to need to do for this layer is tighten up the range sliders to reduce the width of the fall off between the white and black values and then we'll invert the results so that the white values are on the bottom half of the stool. That way it looks as if the grime is coming up from the floor. All right, let's add a Perlin noise on top of this. We'll raise the amplitude a little bit and then max out the frequency to 20. Now let's bump up the octaves to give us a bit more grunge and we'll also raise the lacunarity and persistence to give us some really noisy detail. And then let's go back and adjust the seed until we get a look we're happy with. All right, now we can go ahead and set this layer to overlay, and we'll now see the noise present along the fall off separating the white and black portions of the mask. The problem we have now is that it's a straight angle with a linear fall off, which doesn't feel very natural. So what we're gonna do now is add another Perlin noise. The purpose of this layer is to eliminate the linear fall off and straight edge we have. So the first thing I'm gonna do is bump the amplitude up pretty high so that I get some very dark sections as well as brighter sections. I'll also push the frequency up a little bit to scale down the details. Because I want this layer to remove chunks of the mask below, I don't want fine details, so I'll leave octaves set to 1. Okay, if I set the layer blending to overlay as well, we can see how the noise has helped break up the straight line we had going across the leg, giving us a little more of a natural fall off. So now all we need to do is find a seed we're happy with. And then finally, we can add yet another Perlin noise. We'll keep the amplitude pretty low so that the contrast isn't too intense, and then we'll also bump up the frequency, octaves, 
Lacunarity and persistence to make sure that we have a nice grungy look. Then we'll set the blend to multiply and drop the opacity way down. This will keep any of the larger sections from being full white, which will help the dirt layer blend in a little nicer with the stool's texture. And now we have some dirt and grime that's built up near the bottom of the mesh, and we did it all without using any texture data in the mask. All right, that does it for the noise component. I hope this video was helpful in giving you a deeper understanding of what noise component does and how its settings work. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.